Good morning and welcome to Daybreak. I'm Brittany Lawfer. And I'm Blaine King. Coming up on today's episode, we will tell you about a new degree being offered here at Point Park. And there's a new app that is sweeping through Point Park. We will be sitting down with two of the people behind Thicket. And find out what Steeler has already been lost for the season. Daybreak starts right now. You know, I was I was gone last week. Yeah, I was in, in the beautiful sunshine state. Florida, Lucky and I you. got back to the Pittsburgh airport, and it was and? For like 40 degrees, and it was <laughs> raining, and oh. the good old Pittsburgh weather. Do you think it's going to be like that the rest of this week? Oh, I hope not. There was patches of last week where it was nice and warm, but Kyle, can you please give us some good news that spring is here? Uh, I have no good news, but. Welcome back, Brittany, but uh, it's going to get cold. As we're going to see on Monday, it's only going to be 39 degrees, and there's going to be a chance of snow and rain because of the, where the temperature is. Guys, it's going to be cold. Layer up, Brittany. Put a jean jacket on over that dress because it's going to be freezing today. The United Student Government allocated funds to clubs and organizations last week. This will be the last time this academic term that they will allocate money to clubs. USG had $16,183 to allocate, and out of that, they were able to allocate $14,500. Besides, the Copa Theater Club received the most funds with $2,563. However, the Feminist Collective will make an appeal for their budget of $2,000. The university has added a new course. The School of Communication will now offer an environmental journalism degree. The program will launch in the fall and will give a great learning opportunity for journalism. The School of Communication and the School of Arts and Sciences will collaborate to provide students with the needed courses they need. There is a new popular game circulating around campus. The game is called Thicket and it is able to be played on mobile devices. The development team consisted of Six Point Park students, Mike Cooknick, Maggie McCauley, Dan Helbling, Nico Vessio, Mark Gazica, and Haley Turek. We will have two of those students on in a little later to give us some more details on their new game and how you can begin to play. We reported a, excuse me, we reported a few weeks ago how Point Park radio station WPPJ won an Intercollegiate Broadcast System Award for the sixth year in a row. They won in the category for the best radio drama. Junior journalism major Tyler Polk was the mastermind behind the award and said his inspiration came from the video game Grand Theft Auto. The background of the drama was focused on a group of street racers playing to rob a bank. Planning, excuse me. When we return from the break, as promised, we will be sitting down with two of, pe of the people behind the new app, Thicket. And later we will recap the results of this past Tuesday's primaries and which Republican candidate has dropped out now. Welcome back to Daybreak. Now joining us in studio are Maggie McCauley and Mike Cooknick to discuss with, uh, with us excuse me, their app, Thicket. Welcome, guys. And my first question is, what was the reason behind this new app? Well, uh, my roommate, Nico Bescio, uh, he was taking pictures of people on Facebook and tagging people in them and putting them up on Facebook. Right. And um, he, we were talking one night and said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if this was an app? So I started coding away, and here it is. Now it's an app. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> Can you explain the app to our viewers real quick? Yes. Don't know. So it's a it's a photo sharing game. Um, right. So think of think of uh, some people use Snapchat to take pictures of each other and send mm -hmm. them to each other. It's the same sort of concept. Only you have to take a picture of somebody and it sends it to that person and you score points based on it. So you get ten points for when you take a picture of somebody, but they lose those ten points. And then there's individual oh. post points uh, that increment and decrement. Each, yeah. each player's post. It just really adds that competitive element to the game that people are already playing. So we're getting them onto our platform and you constantly have to be checking it every day because you have to see where you are at in the leaderboard and yeah. see where you are with your points. So right. it really keeps users engaged. That's neat. And then mm. where'd you come up with the name Thicket? 
Well, um, <laughs> it's it's sort of based on the, the idea of, of playing tag when you were a, a, a kid running yeah. around in the forest playing tag. So we 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 took sort of a campy approach to it. It, it feels like a game that you, you would also play at summer camp. And um, forest and things like that were taken. Um, so thicket is, you know, a, a dense wooded area. And we changed the, the Eden and I. And, of it, yeah. and it seems catchy enough for us. So there yeah. it is. Nice. And you mentioned to us before we came on that it took about five months for this app to get developed. Yes. What was, what was the process in those five months? Um, well, once the idea was established, I, I, I need to find a framework and a, and a back end that would hold it. And I've, I've developed things in the past. So it was really just me sitting down and just doing it. And because um, it's, it has user registration, user management, privacy settings, right. all those things, um, it, 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 it took a lot more time than, than previous things that I've made. But um, certainly, I've, I've come across a, a few challenges. The, certainly, the scale of it was a, was a challenge. but. Um, yeah, it was a it was a lot of late nights. It was a lot of just me coding every free chance that I had mm -hmm. uh, for about five months or so. Wow! And then there's other members of your team. There's six of you. So can yes. you kind of touch on what every single role is for each person, each of you? Yeah, sure. So I mean, we do have our own specific roles, but we definitely help out in whatever area that needs help, or we offer suggestions. So. Right. Um, I handle PR and external marketing, and then we have some people that work on campus-specific outreach. Um, other positions are kind of dealing with like legal things, writing like our terms of use, and making sure everything we're doing is in line with legal tea kind <laughs> of purposes, so yeah. we don't get in trouble. Um, what else? Uh, do we do? I don't know yeah, what everyone's exact titles are, but we just kind of do what what needs to be done. Because exactly, I, I, it's it's only been available to the public, the the small concentrated mm -hmm. public for ten days. Um, so when you say small concentrated, do you mean Point Park or yes? Okay. So it's specifically, yeah. Right. It's 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 available to anyone, um, mm -hmm. and but because it's in the beta testing phase, we we want to keep the user base small and concentrated so that we can really harness the feedback and and get feedback that is relevant to us and things that we can understand and easily communicate with the people, which is why we're targeting Point Park right off the bat. Um, but from there, once it launches into the official app store, because right now it's in a beta store. Um, so from there, we'll be you know, spreading it and throwing it wide. And then when will this be launched? in the real app store? Uh, we are hoping by the 1st of April. Yes, um, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. It, it, it has to pass a lot of licensing tests and mm -hmm. uh, a development tests through Apple. Um, but because it's in the test phase, um, it's already been, been approved and greenlit for, for testing by Apple. So it's just one more step to get it into the store. And there's uh, definitely some new features coming out in the store at the market release. Awesome. And Maggie, you mentioned marketing is something that you're uh, specializing in. Yes. How, can you explain more how you're marketing out and trying to get more Point Park students involved in Thicket? Sure. So we're having a launch party on Sunday. So that's going to be our first official event where students can come, download the app, learn how to use it, and find what we call campers. So that's the people that you play with who's in your camp. So you can see who's on the app, who can you add into your camp. So that's going to be a great opportunity for people to really get to know what Thicket is. Other than that, we also have brand ambassadors. So those are people that are well-known faces around campus, respected right. leaders, just people that everybody knows. And they're serving as these brand ambassadors for us. So they're really talking about the app in their clubs, their classes, wherever they are, just really hyping it up for us. So they've been a huge component yeah. of this project because yeah, we of course only know so many people so yeah. having these other people to serve as other voices for the app has been really helpful yeah. and then awesome. once it launches is it a free app or yes. it will be yeah. free mm -hmm. for everyone yes, yes. It'll be free. android and iphone uh iPhone right now, for now just iphone android hopefully by the end of the summer do you um, have to do awesome. a different whole coding process for that in a way yeah <laughs> wow yeah. so I wonder yeah why, <laughs> i wonder why people like iphone more than android <laughs> uh, but our final question for you both is what is what is your vision for this app uh, where do you see this kind of from a year from now um i i don't know because i i i would like to of course it be a recognized app something something that is uh, a a common household name um but uh, of course the the extent that it's gotten to within the 10 days and certainly months ago when I started it has been totally different than what I could imagine and, right. and what I could foresee. So 
if I if I were to say any hopes and dreams, who who knows what it could be. But um, I, I'm just excited yeah. to see where it goes because it, it really is starting to take a life of its own and that's that's my intentions. It is. Uh, just uh, this week it's really taken off and I'm definitely the big picture kind of person in this um, core group that we have. But I always joke like a year from now we're going to be sitting on Ellen and she's going to be playing <laughs> the game. I just see this taking off nationally a lot <laughs> faster than we can probably imagine. Nice. It nice. sounds like a fun game. It does sound. I'm <laughs> and we'll already sure playing it. Already on it right now. I just now. got accepted, so I have to go through the process of setting up the yes. camp. <laughs> yep, yes. set up your camp, add some okay. campers. Yep. And I'm excited. I this know, will be I'll great. Be camper. <laughs> and then just so you guys know, the launch party is on Sunday? Sunday from <laughs> 5 to 7 in Lawrence Hall 200. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. All so right. thank you guys so much for coming on. Yes. Thank, thank you. Brothers. Thanks so much. And stay tuned for after the break. We will tell you more of uh, two upcoming stories happening in Harrisburg in local news. Welcome back. Now it's time to take a look around the region with local news headlines. If you are traveling around the Washington and Westmoreland area in the next few months, you may experience some road closures. Construction, excuse me, on Interstate 70. The construction will conclude several projects such as lane reconstruction and reduced speed limits. State police have sent almost a dozen troopers out today to begin a summer-long crackdown Construction barricades are already in place for the construction from Washington to New Stanton. The, man, uh, the main improvements are directed to a very old corridor that is also desperately in need of driver elbow room. The construction is set to begin this spring. A second Pennsylvania justice says he will resign in regards to the porn email scandal that has been ongoing these past few months. Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice Michael Eakin stated his decision last Tuesday, making him the second member of the state's high court to quit over the past 18 months over the email scandal. The explicit and offensive emails were sent between him and others, such as friends and lawyers. 67-year-old Eakin, a Republican, has been on the state Supreme Court since 2002. The first justice to resign was Justice Seamus McCaffrey, a Democrat who retired in 2014 after being suspended by the court for his role in swapping offensive emails. Problems with the state budget are still ongoing as Governor Tom Wolf is blasting the latest budget plan, stating that the no new taxes plan unveiled by Republicans last Tuesday is out of balance and leaves a deficit of about $1.6 billion next year by the Republican-owned calculations. While Wolf has not said whether or not he would veto it, he did state that he wants a budget that is in balance where the math actually works. Over a week ago, Pittsburgh was scarred with a deadly shooting in Wilkinsburg that resulted in the death of six people, including an unborn child, during an ambush attack at a backyard cookout. While the police have not released any new details regarding the case, Mayor of Pittsburgh Bill Peduto has given his thoughts on the tragedy. He stated that after such a horrific event with an entire family targeted, he is worried that Pittsburgh may see retaliatory action and preparations need to be made in case of one. Preparations have begun in Zone 5 as Pittsburgh police are reportedly working to prevent further victims. Last week, we officially celebrated St. Patrick's Day, but as we all know, Pittsburgh likes to celebrate the holiday earlier than that. Joe Hall has the story. Pittsburgh is seeing green and the sound of bagpipes are filling the air this St. Patrick's Day weekend. <laughs> Pittsburgh celebrated St. Patrick's Day with its annual fair last Saturday, one of the biggest yearly events celebrated in the downtown area and certainly one of the most colorful ones as well. The parade community said that about 20,000 people took part in the parade march, which began on Liberty Avenue and trailed through Grant Street, Boulevard of the Allies, and Stanwix before ending at Commonwealth Place. The march started around 10 a.m., and the sidelines were packed with onlookers that crowd sidewalks every year, eager to watch the different floats, marching bands, and dancers that pass by. Some call it their favorite event all year. I love the St. Patrick's Day Parade. This is the best parade probably in the world. I know it's the best in America. Look, Patchy the Pirate's here. Patchy the Pirate is here. Oh, it gets me pumped up. While the parade marched on, Market Square was also celebrating in its own way with the Irish Fair in the Square, 
where drinks were served and families could gather to enjoy the festivities and local businesses. Reporting for Point News, I'm Joseph Hall. After the surprise passing of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, we have been waiting to see who President Obama would peg as Scalia's replacement. With more on that story, let's go to Josh Krupp at the Daybreak News Desk. Thanks, Blaine. President Obama nominated Judge Merrick Garland for the Supreme Court last week. The 63-year-old chief judge for the U.S. Court of Appeals is respected across political lines and was praised by Obama as one of America's sharpest legal minds. Obama considered him for previous Supreme Court seats that ultimately went to Justices Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan. Senate Republicans do not plan to have hearings or vote on Garland's nomination. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the American people should elect a president who would then decide a nominee. The announcement comes 32 days after Justice Antonin Scalia's death. In the third edition of Super Tuesday during this election year, frontrunners Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump won big and padded their leads for their party nominations. Trump routed Marco Rubio in his home state of Florida, causing the senator to drop out of the race. Trump also saw victories in Illinois and North Carolina, along with a narrow win in Missouri over Ted Cruz. Governor John Kasich won his winner-take-all home state of Ohio. Clinton is turning her eyes to November and to Trump after the former Secretary of State shut out Bernie Sanders on Super Tuesday. Her win in North Carolina completed her sweep of the southern states. North Korea sentenced a U.S. tourist to 15 years in prison with hard labor. The country's highest court sentenced 21-year-old Otto Warmbrier, excuse me, Otto Warmbrier, a University of Virginia undergraduate, after authorities say he tried to steal a propaganda banner. He was convicted and sentenced in a one-hour trial in North Korea's Supreme Court. The U.S. government condemned his sentence and accused the country of using American detainees as political pawns. A U.S. Department spokesperson called the sentence unduly harsh and urged the country to pardon and release him on humanitarian grounds. In lighter news, the Fourth World Happiness Report says Denmark is once again the happiest country in the world. Denmark topped the list in 2012 and 13, but Switzerland was atop the list last year. Denmark is followed by Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, Finland, and Canada. Now let's go back to the two brightest smiling faces here at UVU with Brittany and Blaine. Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> thanks, Josh. I keep this smile on my face 24-7. <laughs> After our next break, let's begin Madness Season. That's right, and find out what annual tradition started last week in our sports report. Welcome back to Daybreak. I'm Sarah Maculin with your sports update. It's that time of the year again, March Madness. The NCAA basketball tournament, tournament began on Tuesday last week with the playing games and continued into the week with round one play. Over the weekend, the teams battled it out in the second round of games to see who would make it to the Sweet 16. Sweet 16 play starts this Thursday and the outcomes will decide which lucky teams will be a part of the Elite Eight. More basketball news with the NBA and the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors beat the New Orleans Pelicans last Monday by a score of 125 to 107. The win brought the Warriors record to 60 and 6, making them the fastest team to 60 wins in NBA history. Now on to the NFL and free agency. The New England Patriots traded Pro Bowl defensive end Chandler Jones to the Arizona Cardinals last week for guard Jonathan Cooper and a 2016 second round draft pick. The Pats also acquired defensive end Chris Long from the St. Louis Rams. The Denver Broncos also took action in free agency, re-signing running back C.J. Anderson. The Broncos matched a two-year, $18 million offer from the Dolphins to keep Anderson. The Baltimore Ravens added two free agent players to their roster last week. The Ravens signed former Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Mike Wallace to a two-year deal and San Diego Chargers veteran safety Eric Weddle to a four-year deal. In other football news, Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver Martavis Bryant received at least a one-year suspension from the league after violating the NFL policy and program for substances of abuse. Bryant's manager said Bryant used the drugs to deal with depression he had been struggling with. The suspension will break up the productive wide receiver trio in Pittsburgh between Bryant, Antonio Brown, and Marcus Wheaton. In other news, the Washington Capitals clinched a playoff berth last week in their 2-1 overtime win against the Carolina Hurricanes. Alex Ovechkin scored the winning goal, guaranteeing the Capitals their eighth playoff appearance in nine years. 
The Capitals now sit comfortably in first place in the Metropolitan Division. Now let's go to Casey with information on what fan favorite is going on another crusade. A big announcement merged in the movie world this week. Disney announced that the fifth Indiana Jones movie is in the works with Harrison Ford returning as the lead and Steven Spielberg returning as director. The last film of the franchise, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of Crystal Skull, was released in 2008 to mixed reviews. Disney chairman Alan Horn released a statement saying, quote, Indiana Jones is one of the greatest heroes in cinematic history and we can't wait to bring him back to screen in 2019, unquote. The film was scheduled to be released in July of 2019. In TV news, Monday night, The Bachelor had its season 20 finale. 26-year-old contestant Ben Higgins proposed to 25-year-old flight attendant Lauren Bushnell after eliminating 27 other women. Ben was a controversial contestant as he was the first to have said the phrase I love you to both final contestants. However, Ben has repeatedly said he doesn't regret it, stating, quote, I expressed my feelings. I tried to be as honest as possible the whole experience, no matter what situation, and it led me to Lauren and I can't regret that, unquote. The runner-up, 24-year-old Jojo Fletcher, was announced to be ABC's next Bachelorette. After the announcement, Fletcher stated, quote, I want to find my husband. I want to find the person who will complete me and will make me feel the full person that I meant to be, unquote. JoJo's season is the 12th in the series and will air May, or t May 23rd. Finally, in the theater world this week, Broadway's smash hit Hamilton was back in the spotlight as it was announced that the cast will be traveling to the White House to perform. Monday evening, a live broadcast of the performance was available to fans unable to snag a ticket to the sold-out show. The cast performed two numbers from the show, the opener, Alexander Hamilton, and My Shot. The Obamas have been longtime fans of the show and first became affiliated with it when they saw the star and composer, Lin-Manuel Miranda, perform a preview of the opening number back in 2008. Michelle Obama highly praised the show, stating that the hip-hop phenomenon was, quote, the best piece of art in any form that I've ever seen in my life, unquote. Now let's check in with Kyle again to see how the weather looks for the rest of our week. Well, the weather kind of looks like my March Madness bracket at the point. It's up, it's down, it's cold, it's snowy. You, we're going to get a lot of we're going to get a lot of everything, guys. I mean, we're going to start the week on Monday. It's going to snow. Then Tuesday, it's going to be sunny. Wednesday, sunny. But Thursday, it goes back to sadness, just like when a, a 15 seed beats a two seed. Uh, we get to a 65, then a 58. Then it stays cold and it goes back up. The weather's going to be it's going to be very sporadic. So just make sure before you go outside, check the weather, make sure you're dressed properly. Don't wear shorts when it snows. That's how you get sick. And with a whooping cough going around, you don't want that in your life. But I'll go back to the experts and Blaine and Brittany, who seem to stay healthy all the time. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, I try to stay healthy running up and down the steps going through West Penn and all around campus. Oh, yeah. And I guess <laughs> we'll have to bring our winter clothes out at least one more time this spring. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Dig Break. Make sure you tune in again next week for more entertainment. More news. And, and everything <laughs> in between. <laughs> have a great, great week, Point Park. Point Park. <laughs>